Hi everyone, it's Professor Primington. In this video, we'll talk about more trigonometric graphs. So we've already seen the tangent function can be used to find distances such as the height of a building or height of a mountain or the flagpole using right triangles. However, if we want to measure repeated occurrences of distance, such as the distance the beam of light travels from a rotating light in a lighthouse, we're going to use the tangent function to approximate the distance using its period. So remember, asymptotes will be needed to illustrate the repeated cycles when the beam runs parallel to the coastline because the beam of light will actually appear to extend forever. So in this section, we're going to explore the graphs of the tangent function and other trigonometric functions. So in this video, we're going to analyze the graph of the tangent, secant, and cosecant functions, and we're going to use transformations to graph variations of the tangent, secant, and cosecant functions. So let's talk about the graphs of tangent and cotangent. If we want to discuss the graphs of the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant functions, we're going to begin by starting with the periodic properties of these functions. So remember that the sine and cosine functions have a period of 2 pi. That means that the values or the output values of the sine and cosine function will repeat every 2 pi radians. The reciprocal functions, cosecant and secant, will also have a period of 2 pi because the cosecant function is 1 divided by the sine function and the secant function is 1 divided by cosine. So the periods will be unaffected for those two functions. However, if you want to graph the tangent and cotangent functions, they're going to have a period of pi. So the definition of periodic properties. The functions tangent and cotangent have a period of pi, and that means tangent of x plus pi. So if you add pi inside the argument of the tangent function, it will remain the same output value. So tangent of x plus pi is equal to tangent of x. And same thing for the cotangent function. Cotangent of x plus pi will also be equal to cotangent of x because the period of the cotangent function is also pi radians. So the values of x and x plus pi, they're coterminal, and so they'll give you the same terminal points. So it means the tangent and the cotangent function output values are the same. The functions cosecant and secant have a period of 2 pi. Cosecant of x plus 2 pi will be equal to cosecant of x, and secant of x plus 2 pi is also equal to secant of x. So that means the values of x and x plus 2 pi are coterminal, which will give you the same terminal points, which means that the cosecant and secant functions will actually have the same value for x and also x plus 2 pi. So let's begin by providing a sketch of the tangent function. Since the period is pi, we only need to sketch the graph of any interval of length pi radians, and then the pattern will repeat to the left and also repeat to the right. Therefore, we can sketch the graph of the interval for tangent between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 radians. So let's make a table of values. Let's let x values be 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and then we'll increase the x values very slightly as we get closer and closer to pi over 2 radians. So 1.4, 1.5, 1.55, 1.57, 5, and 1.5707. So the x values are approaching pi over 2 radians. And the output values, whenever x is equal to 0, tangent of 0 is 0. Whenever x is pi over 6, Tangent is root 3 divided by 3, or approximately 0 0.58. Whenever x is pi over 4, tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. Whenever x is equal to pi over 3, tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3, which is approximately 1.73. And then whenever x is equal to 1.4, tangent is 5.8. When x is 1.5, tangent is 14.1. 1.55 for x value, that gives you a, a tangent value of 48.08. When x is 1.57, the tangent is 1,255.77. Whenever x is 1.5707, tangent is 10,381.33. So notice that the values of the tangent function, y equals tangent of x, approach infinity as x approaches pi over 2 from the left side. So whenever you're less than x equals pi over 2, it looks like the tangent values will actually increase without bound. So they'll approach positive infinity. And recall that if you want to find out the output values of the tangent function, the x value x determines the terminal point on the unit circle, which is p x comma y, and tangent of x is the ratio of the y coordinate of your terminal point divided by the x coordinate of your terminal point, as long as the x value is not zero. So whenever x is equal to pi over 2, notice that pi over 2 will give you a terminal point 0 comma 1. That will be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. So whenever x is equal to pi over 2, it looks like you're approaching a vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 2 for the tangent function, because tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. And so since the tangent function can be undefined because we have division by x and x cannot be zero, recall that the domain of the tangent function is the set of all real numbers except odd multiples of pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So from the table values, we notice that as x approaches pi over 2 from the left side, the value of the tangent function increases without bound. In other words, the tangent function will increase towards positive infinity as x approaches pi over 2, so that's an x value as you're approaching from the left side, so a little negative on the superscript of pi over 2. So in a similar way, you can actually make a table of values as x approaches negative pi over 2 from the right side, and the value of the tangent function will decrease without bound. So that means tangent of x is approaching negative infinity as x approaches pi over 2 from the right side, so x is approaching pi over 2 with a little plus as a superscript. So the values of y equals tangent of x decrease without bound 
as x approaches x equals pi over 2 from the right side. So what we found out is that there are vertical lines, x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals pi over 2, that are vertical asymptotes for the graph of y equals tangent of x. So we can actually sketch the graph of the tangent function for one complete period, which is pi radians, for x equals negative pi over 2, which is a vertical asymptote, to x equals positive pi over 2, which is also a vertical asymptote. This distance, or this length, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is the pi radians. So that actually will be one complete period of the tangent function. So let's fill in some key points from the table of values we had earlier. If you have negative pi over 3, the tangent function will be negative root 3. At negative pi over 4, the tangent function is negative 1. At negative pi over 6, the tangent function is negative root 3 divided by 3. Because for x equals negative pi over 3, x equals negative pi over 4, and x equals negative pi over 6, that's actually in quadrant 4, and the tangent function is negative in quadrant 4. So that's why the output values are negative. Tangent of 0 is 0. Tangent of pi over 6 was root 3 divided by 3. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And tangent of pi over 3 was equal to root 3. So it looks like if you actually draw a curve between these points, you actually have this shape for the tangent function. And notice as you approach x equals negative pi over 2 from the right side, the y values are decreasing without bound. And as you approach x equals pi over 2 from the left side, it looks like the y values are increasing without bound because x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals positive pi over 2 are vertical asymptotes. The graph will never actually touch or cross the vertical asymptote at x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals pi over 2. And since this was one complete period for the tangent function between x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals positive pi over 2, we actually have the graph repeat as you go to the left and repeat as you go to the right. So it looks like there are vertical asymptotes occurring whenever x is equal to k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer. And so you have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 3 pi over 2, x equals negative pi over 2, x equals positive pi over 2, and x equals 3 pi over 2, and so on. There are vertical asymptotes occurring whenever the x value of the terminal point on your unit circle is 0, and the graph will have the same pattern every pi radians. The graph will decrease without bound as you go to the left, because it will hit a vertical asymptote as you're going to the left, and the y values are decreasing without bound. But as you go to the right, the graph will hit another vertical asymptote, and the graph will increase without bound. And this is because the period of the tangent function, y equals tangent of x, the period is pi. Now, on the other hand, the cotangent function is graphed on the interval 0 to pi. Recall that the domain of the cotangent function is a set of all real numbers except for integer multiples of pi, or 180 degrees. So therefore, if you want to graph the cotangent function, there are going to be vertical asymptotes at x equals 0 and x equals pi instead of x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals pi over 2 like y equals tangent of x. Therefore, you can actually sketch the graph of the cotangent function for one complete period between 0 radians and pi radians, and then repeat the pattern to the left and also repeat the pattern to the right. So let's graph the cotangent function between x equals 0 and x equals pi radians. So at x equals 0, there's a vertical asymptote, which will be right on the y-axis, and you also have x equals pi, which is a vertical asymptote, because cotangent of 0 is undefined and cotangent of pi is also undefined. So now, if you actually generate a table of values for the cotangent function between x equals 0 and x equals pi, you'll have these values. At pi over 6, cotangent is square root 3. Cotangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1, because it's the reciprocal of tangent of pi over 4. Cotangent of pi over 3 is square root 3 divided by 3. Cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. Cotangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root 3 divided by 3. Cotangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. And cotangent of 5 pi over 6 is negative square root 3 divided by 3. You obtain the output values by actually evaluating the tangent function and then taking the reciprocal of the output value for the tangent function. So if you graph a curve that actually passes through these points, you'll actually have this graph of the cotangent function, y equals cotangent of x. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, a vertical asymptote at x equals pi, and the graph will increase without bound as x approaches 0 from the right side, and the graph will decrease without bound as x approaches pi from the left side. And so this is one complete period for the cotangent function, y equals cotangent of x. The period of the cotangent function is pi radians. So now this pattern will continue every pi radians to the left and also to the right. And so you'll actually generate this graph. Recall that the cotangent function is undefined for integer values of pi. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote x equals negative pi, x equals 0, x equals pi, and so on. So you'll have vertical asymptotes occurring at x equals k pi, where k is an integer. And the same pattern will continue every pi radians. The graph will increase without bound on the right side of the vertical asymptote and the graph will decrease without bound on the left side of the vertical asymptote. And you have x-intercepts at x equals pi over 2, x equals 3 pi over 2, x equals 5 pi over 2, and so on, x equals negative pi over 2, x equals negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. So it looks like you have x-intercepts at every odd multiple of pi over 2 radians. So now let's talk about the graphs of transformations of the tangent and cotangent functions. Well, now we're going to consider graphs of transformations of the tangent and cotangent functions. Since the tangent and the cotangent functions have a period of pi, we know that the functions y equals a times tangent of kx and y equals a times cotangent of kx, where k is a positive number, will actually complete one period 
as k times x varies between 0 and pi. In other words, you have the interval 0 less than or equal to kx less than or equal to pi. So if you take this inequality, 0 less than or equal to k times x less than or equal to pi, and divide each part by k, you actually have 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi over k. So as the x values range between 0 and pi over k, you actually complete one period for the function y equals a times tangent kx, or y equals a times cotangent kx. So the period of these functions is pi over k radians, rather than pi radians. And the a that's being multiplied by the tangent function, or the a that's being multiplied by the cotangent function, that's going to affect the y values. So that's going to be the amplitude is the absolute value of a. So to summarize, the definition for the period of the tangent and cotangent curves, the functions y equals a times tangent kx, and y equals a times cotangent kx, where k is a positive number, the period is pi divided by k. And that's because the tangent and the cotangent functions have originally a period of pi radians. But if you have k times x as the argument of the tangent function or the cotangent function, now the period will be pi divided by k radians. Therefore, one complete period of the graphs of the tangent and cotangent functions occur on any interval of length pi over k radians. And we're going to sketch a complete period of these graphs it's going to be convenient to select an interval between vertical asymptotes. So that means if you want to graph one complete period of y equals a times tangent kx, you can select the interval negative pi divided by 2k to pi divided by 2k. And if you want to graph one complete period of y equals a times cotangent kx, you can select an appropriate interval of 0 to pi over k. So let's look at example one, graphing the tangent and cotangent curves. Determine the amplitude, the period, and the horizontal shift for the following tangent or cotangent functions and then graph one complete period of the function with key points labeled. So number one, we're going to graph the function y equals tangent of 3x. So 3x is the argument of the tangent function. Notice that it's 1 is the coefficient of the tangent function, so the amplitude is the absolute value of 1 or equal to 1. And then the period will be pi divided by k. We'll notice that k is equal to 3 in this case, so the period of this function will be pi over 3 radians. So if you want to graph one complete period of this tangent function, you can graph between negative pi over 6 and pi over 6. So at x equals pi over 6, there'll be a vertical asymptote. And x equals negative pi over 6, there'll be a vertical asymptote. So every pi over 3 radians, there will be a vertical asymptote for this tangent function. So now let's find some key points on this graph. So if you plug in x equals 0, you'll have tangent of 3 times 0. That's tangent of 0, which will give you a 0. So tangent of 0 is 0. That means that the graph will actually pass through the point 0 comma 0. If you plug in pi over 12, you'll have tangent of 3 times pi over 12. That's tangent of pi over 4, which will give you 1. So at x equals pi over 12, you'll get 1. So the graph will pass through the point pi over 12 comma 1. And also the graph will pass through the point negative pi over 12 comma negative 1 because the tangent function is an odd function. You'll have symmetry with respect to the origin. And so the graph will increase without bound as you go approach the vertical asymptote x equals pi over 6 from the left side. And as you approach x equals pi over 6 from the right side, the graph will decrease without bound. And the pattern will continue every pi over 3 radians. So the graph will pass through the points pi over 4 comma negative 1 and also pi over 3 comma 0. And the graph will increase without bound as you approach the next vertical asymptote. So this is one complete period between the vertical asymptotes x equals negative pi over 6 and x equals positive pi over 6. So number two, we're going to graph the function y equals negative 2 times tangent of x. So notice that the tangent function is being multiplied by negative 2. The amplitude will be the absolute value of negative 2 or positive 2. So that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 for this graph of y equals negative 2 times tangent of x. And also there's a negative on the outside of the tangent function that's going to reflect the graph across the x-axis. And then the period of this function is pi over k. Well, k is 1 in this case, so the period will be pi. So it looks like we're going to have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals positive pi over 2. However, notice that the graph will have an amplitude of 2, but also be reflected across the x-axis. Rather than decreasing without bound as you approach the vertical asymptote from the right side, the graph will increase without bound as you approach the vertical asymptote from the right side, and the graph will decrease without bound as you approach the vertical asymptote x equals pi over 2 from the left side. So now let's find some key points on the graph. So if x equals 0, you'll have y equals negative 2 times tangent of 0, Tangent of 0 is 0, so negative 2 times 0 will give you 0, so the graph will still pass through the point 0 comma 0. If you substitute in x equals pi over 4, you'll have y equals negative 2 times tangent of pi over 4. Well, tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so you have negative 2 times 1, which will give you negative 2. So the graph will pass through the point 0, 0, and also pi over 4 comma negative 2. So as you approach x equals pi over 2 from the left side, the graph will decrease without bound. If x equals 3 pi over 4, you'll have y equals negative 2 times tangent of 3 pi over 4. Well, tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. And so you'll have y equals negative 2 times negative 1, which will give you positive 2. So that means the graph will pass through the point 3 pi over 4 for the x value and 2 for the y value. 
and since the period of this function is pi radians, notice that you pass through the point 0 comma 0, you'll also pass through the point at pi comma 0 because that is a distance of pi radians, you'll have the same output value because the period of this function is pi radians. You'll have a vertical class of x equals pi over 2, x equals 3 pi over 2, and so on, and you'll also have a vertical class of x equals negative pi over 2, and x equals negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. The graph will just repeat this same pattern, every pi radians, for the graph of y equals negative 2 times tangent of x. So let's do a couple more. Number three, y equals one third times tangent of the quantity x attract pi over four. So notice that you have an amplitude of the absolute value of one third because the entire tangent function is being multiplied by one third. So the amplitude will be absolute value of one third, which is equal to one third. The period of the function is pi over k. Well, notice that x is being multiplied by one, so k is one, so it would be pi over k or pi over one, so it's equal to pi radians. So the period will be pi radians for this graph of the function. So the pattern will repeat itself every pi radians. However, notice inside the tangent function, the argument isn't just x, it's x attract pi over four. So that's a horizontal shift right pi over four radians. So originally, the tangent function has vertical class such that x equals negative pi over two and x equals pi over two. However, if you shift the graph right pi over four units, you actually have a vertical class such that x equals negative pi over four and x equals three pi over four radians. And so the graph will complete one complete period between the two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative pi over four and x equals three pi over four. So now let's find out some key values. If you substitute in x equals pi over four, you'll actually have y equals one third times tangent of pi over four subtract pi over four. That will give you tangent of zero. Tangent of zero is zero. So y equals one third times zero will give you zero. So there'll be an x intercept at pi over four. At x equals pi over two, the y value will be squared three divided by three. And so the graph will decrease without bound as you approach the vertical so x equals negative pi over four radians. And the graph will increase through these two points. As you go to the right, it will increase without bound as you approach the vertical so x equals three pi over four radians. And so the graph will repeat this same pattern every pi radians. And so that's because the period of the tangent function was pi. And so this gives you a graph of y equals one third times tangent of x subtract pi over four. All right, let's try one more. Number four y equals two times cotangent of three x attract pi over four. So notice you need to simplify what's inside the argument of this cotangent function. Notice that you can factor out a three from both terms. That way when you factor out three from three x, you'll have just x remaining. So you'll have two times cotangent of the quantity, three factored out from both terms, then you'll have an x left over and then subtract. If you factor out three from pi over four, you'll have pi over 12 left. So that's because three times pi over 12 will give you three pi over 12, which will simplify to pi over four. And so the function can be rewritten as two times cotangent of the quantity, three times the quantity x attract pi over 12. So the amplitude is what's being multiplied by the entire cotangent function. So the amplitude is the absolute value of two or equal to two. The period of the cotangent function is pi over k. So the k in this case is three because that's what's being multiplied by the entire x attract pi over 12. So pi over three is the period of this function, y equals two times cotangent of three x attract pi over four. And then it's also a horizontal shift right pi over 12 units because it's not just x, it's x attract pi over 12. And so the graph of this function will have a vertical class of x equals five pi over 12 radians. And remember the cotangent function will increase without bound as you approach a vertical slope from the right side and it will decrease without bound as you approach the vertical slope from the left side. And so the graph will pass through the point three pi over 12 or pi over four comma zero. And so that's an x intercept for the graph. And you also pass through the point seven pi over 12 comma zero because the period is pi over three radians. And so the graph will have this pattern every pi over three radians. And so this is the graph of one complete period for the graph of y equals two times cotangent of the quantity, three x attract pi over four. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we've talked about how to analyze the graph of the tangent and cotangent functions, and also how to use transformations to graph variations of the tangent and cotangent functions. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we finish up our discussion on more trigonometric graphs.